Greetings, and welcome to Breaking Bad Week on Earthling Television. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. Today's artifact is season number four of Breaking Bad, featuring Giancarlo Stanton, most famous for playing Buggin' Out in Spike Lee's award-winning vampire film, Do the Right One In. Yo! In season number four, Walter and Jesse have finagled some short-term job security, even in the face of major cutbacks. And Walt thought that fly was a contaminant. Inundated by the pointless human emotion of remorse, Jesse turns his attention to dancing, but Gus comes from that town in Footloose that hates dancing, so he takes away Jesse's free time and makes him run errands with his enforcer Mike. Guess I have two jobs now. Next thing you know, Jess and Gus are all buddy-buddy, even going on the big company retreat to Mexico together. Meanwhile, the cops, who have been doing a real bang-up job, by the way, find that dead nerd's notebook and figure he must be Heisenberg on account of all the science formulas and shit. These guys are adorable. But wait, they also find a chicken napkin, and Hank finally starts to use that great big noodle of his. I mean, what do we know about Gustavo Fring? Turns out, being suspected of meth kingpinship is a total deal breaker for Gus. I will kill your infant daughter. Walt tries to run away, but Skylar gave all their money to her boyfriend. <laughs> and now they can't afford the running away tax. After some quiet reflection, Walt teams up with Alexander Dambell for a presentation that'll really blow the boss away. <laughs> Finally, we get a nice reminder that Walt loves flowers. Throughout season number four of Breaking Bad, themes of paranoia and powerlessness are reinforced by the Cosmic Eye of Judgment, which, coincidentally, is a pet name I have for my wife. In season number two, the pink teddy bear symbolizes the destruction of Walt's innocence and the importance of putting a tarp over your pool. In season number four, the creepy eyeball of that same teddy bear suggests Walt can never truly hide from the horrible things he's done. Not that he's the hiding type. I am the one who knocks. But Walt may soon be knocking on heaven's door, because Gustavo Fring also has eyes everywhere. We'll accept the right side of his face. Seems Gus and the pink bear are two sides of the same coin. You first. Oh yeah, and him too. Small world. Another recurring element is the human insistence on pride. And I'm not talking about a pride of lions. Well now I am, shit! Pride makes Walt turn down a generous offer from his wealthy friends who weren't even being dicks about it or anything. We have excellent health insurance. In season number three, Pride pulls him back out of retirement, further prolonging the events of the show. This is my formula, this is mine. In season number four, Pride is back in a major way, compelling Walt to drunkenly, stupidly put Heisenberg right back on Hank's radar. Maybe he's still out there. Silly humans couldn't handle their liquor. The trick is to pregame with a couple lewds. After Hank's legs stop working, Pride eats away at his marriage, and also his bowels. Even old Gus Fring isn't immune to Pride. When he thinks the bell guy betrayed him, he insists on handling it himself. I do this. Almost as if he's never even heard of a wheelchair bomb. <laughs> Pride is also at the center of the war for Jesse's loyalty, known by historians as the Great War. When Walt undermines Jesse, Do you really believe that you mean anything to these people? Gus feeds his fragile ego by giving him responsibility, which Spider-Man taught us comes with great power. I hear you can handle yourself. And in the end, it is only by giving Jesse power over his life that Walt regains his trust. Of course, that whole strategy is built upon a big fat lie. I did not do this! Shut up! Throughout this conflict, Jesse's psyche, or brain ghost, is in disarray, as evidenced by the state of his domicile. And despite his best efforts, neither can ever truly be clean. Jesse is trapped, a surrogate son to two dashingly evil men. Shut up and stay in the cart. That's good, Jesse. Both of whom happily put him in harm's way for their own benefit. You slip it into his food or drink. Find a gun. So often is Jesse a sacrificial horse, he even takes to sporting a DJ Jesus t-shirt. Let's just hope he remembers to resurrect some of his other shirts after three days. For Earthling Television, I'm Garrix Wormuloid. It's Breaking Bad Week. To continue on to the next episode in the series, crack open this copy of Leaves of Grass and follow me over to my final breakdown, season number five. And for more of that sweet meth action, click here to see Watch Mojo's countdown of five fascinating facts you probably didn't know about meth. Watch Mojo publishes new top 10 lists every day, covering everything from TV and video games to anime and history. Watch Mojo is one of the great wonders of the universe, having documented almost all facets of human civilization. Give them a visit and subscribe while you're over there. All right, see you all at the final episode, season number five.